Hello princesses! Today I'm going to be doing a full face of It's Skin makeup. I have tried out a lot of It's Skin products in the past, but they have quite a few products like in general, so I decided to grab a full face of products that I have never tried out before and this is the look that I created. There are some products that I do like and there are some products that I really don't like. So if you would like to see how I achieved this look, then please just keep watching. So I'm going to start off with the sunscreen. I'm still not really sure if this is working correctly because it comes out as like a really liquidy yellow liquid and I kind of assumed it would be like a little bit more lotion-y like. It is heavily scented but because it's like obviously a watery texture it is quite easy to apply. I think if I was going out in the sun I would do two layers because I don't think that one layer is enough to give me proper sun exposure, but I'm not actually going outside today really. So we're just going to leave it as it is. The finish isn't bad, it is quite dewy though, so you can see the shine. I wonder if that will dry down. So I'm going to wait about 10 minutes for this to dry down and then I'll be back to do my foundation. So it has been 10 minutes and I don't think that this has gotten any less dewy looking, so it's definitely not a sunscreen that I would wear by itself unless I really wanted to look quite dewy. So now we're going to move on to foundation. This is the Top Professional Touch Finishing Correcting Foundation. I have the shade 21 which is the lightest shade in the collection and it comes with this massive doe foot applicator which I think is really cute. Um, I'm actually going to apply it to my face because I don't have any breakouts at the moment. These are just scars so we should be fine. The doe foot applicator does look pretty messed up though, like at the base. So I'm going to start off with just this side of my face like normal. The door for applicator apparently doesn't pick up that much product because I'm now out. That was disappointing. And I'm going to use a standard cushion puff to blend this in. Okay, so that is what one layer looks like. There actually isn't that much coverage, although the color does look pretty good. In comparison to my neck at the moment, it's slightly kind of like peachy, whereas my neck looks a little bit more olive or yellow, but that's not that bad. This is so hard to get out of the actual tube, and when you pull it out, it kind of like sprinkles foundation everywhere, which is so annoying. But I'm gonna pop a little bit more on the places that need a little bit more coverage. So mainly there forehead could do it a little bit more as well and we will see if this is buildable. Okay so that is with a little bit more coverage. Um, I don't think it really did that much in terms of covering more but it was easy to layer up anyway. So that is one half covered and one half not. So I'm going to quickly do the other side of my face now. Okay so this is the foundation all done. First impressions I love the finish but I'm actually not sure if it's the foundation finish or the sunscreen that's underneath it is giving it that beautiful, glossy looking finish. The coverage is light to medium. You can still see scars poking through and even when I doubled up on coverage, I didn't see that much difference. But it was super easy to blend and the blending actually looks pretty flawless so it's not clinging to any dry spots and I'm hoping that it's going to have decent oil control too. So next I'm going to set my face using the Petite Pact. And I've almost used all of the Babyface Petite products now. I think I'm only missing a couple of things. But this is what the pack looks like. It kind of annoys me that the powder is off center. Like, it looks like a boiled egg to me. And there is a second layer underneath which has the world's tiniest mirror and this little puff, which I am not going to use. So as always, I'm going to be using my Real Techniques uh, setting brush. And I'm going to use a little bit of this and pop it just underneath my eyes. Ooh. This is a very um, fallouty, dusty powder, but it appears to be sitting under my eye quite nicely. Because I'm picking so much up with the brush, I feel like I'm probably going to be over applying it. And then I'm going to use the Real Techniques blush brush to do the rest of my face. So that is one half set and a lot of that glossy dewiness is gone, which is a shame, but a lot of powders do mattify quite well, so I guess it's kind of to be expected. So that is the face set. It does look quite matte, 
It feels quite soft. I don't think the color has changed much either, which is quite good. So moving on to eyebrows, I have the Baby Face Natural Eyebrow. I think I got this in the shade Blackest Brown, I think. It is shade number one, and hopefully I'll provide you some more information on the video when I edit it. But it legit looks black. <laughs> My complaint normally with eyebrow products is that they either look really orange or really light, or both. Um, and since my hair is pretty much the blackest brown you can get without being actually black and part bleached, um, it looks better if my brows are dark and they kind of match the top of my head. Well, that's my personal preference anyway. So I may have bitten off more than I can chew with this pencil being the blackest brown, but um, we will see. I kind of got out of practice using brow pencils, but I used to love them. That used to be all that I used. There is a spool on the other side as well, which is great. So I'm using that to just soften out the head of the brow so it doesn't look quite so harsh. But there it is. I don't, I don't mind that color actually. I think it's probably better to be a little bit darker and I am using like the lightest hand possible. So if you are going like real hard with the brow product you might end up with like black sharpie brows but other than that I think it's actually pretty good the brow product itself is quite hard so it's not smudging easily which is a common complaint with a lot of brow pencils and it seems to actually be sticking to my scar tissue in this brow quite well as well it's also quite easy to smudge away with your fingers which is a huge plus for me as well although at the end of the day it could be a massive negative depending on how easy it is to smudge in general. Overall, the color is a good match, but I'm gonna zoom in real quick. So this is the good brow versus the bad brow. This is the good brow, and that looks pretty good, as usual, because it's the good brow. This is the not so good brow. So this has a scar running through the top part here, and like it just doesn't grow any hair through this part. So you can kind of see where there isn't the hair, and I've drawn over bare skin, because it looks like, especially this part here, it actually looks gray. In comparison so it does look quite obvious that um, there isn't any hair there and I'm trying to recreate here by using brow products but that brow looks great as always <laughs> I'm actually gonna leave you a little bit more zoomed in because I'm gonna be doing my eyeliner so this is the professional no smudge brush pen eyeliner and it appears to have a nice flexible tip that I prefer so I'm gonna try and do some eyeliner but don't expect me to talk very much while doing it because it's just not what's gonna happen So that is one I done there. It actually doesn't look too bad at all, although it's not the blackest eyeliner I've ever had. So you can kind of see over the top of this one, it's a little bit gray, so it's not super, super opaque, um, but it's not bad at all and it's quite easy to use too. Eye number two, this is one where my nose is in the way, so balancing my hand is gonna make the angles a little bit awkward. Mm, that's not black anymore. <laughs> okay, I've made it a little bit blacker, but you can see that this one is not as dark as this one, so the pen is already running out of ink somehow after one eyeline. I swear I have the worst luck with eyeliners, but I'm going to store this one tip down and see if it revives itself over the next couple of days, otherwise it's going to go straight in the empties because I don't have time for that. Next, I'm just going to curl my lashes. And now I'm going to apply my mascara. This is the Baby Face Petite Mascara. That is one eye done in comparison to the other one. Eye done. I successfully managed to get mascara on my eyelids and I'm going to do the lower ones so the mascara I think is pretty underwhelming I have pretty long eyelashes and quite a lot of them anyway so this is pretty much like I kind of colored them black and that was about it especially on the lower lashes I found that pretty underwhelming 
I believe I got the volume one rather than lengthening, but I don't see that my lashes are volumized at all. In fact, they're kind of like sticking together a little bit, which is not my goal. I know I look crazy doing that, but it's the best way to see the eyelashes. The liner, this side looks fine. This side looks gray. So mm, yeah, not really so good for me. And the brows, yeah, we've already been through that too. So the last things that I have are cheek and lip products and they are the same thing. They look like this and they are called something like melting lip and cheek pots, I think. So these are basically a powder and they turn into like almost a liquid. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should have done this before I set my face, but it's too late now. So I'm going to use shade number four because I think it looks the cutest out of all of them. There is a bright red an orange, a really bright cold tone pink. This is number four, which is a bit of a warm tone pink. And then the fifth shade is Dusty Rose, which should have been my favorite, but it actually looks like a brick red and I'm not into that. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and do my cheeks first. I don't know how this is gonna go. I have obviously already swatched these. That's how I know what the colors look like. Um, and it doesn't quite look like that. It's gonna be a little bit um, like deeper, but basically this little applicator here, which is super hard to hold on to has powder on it. I can apply the powder to my skin and it'll kind of like melt. It's really hard to explain. So we're gonna give it a go. Um, pray for me because I have no faith in this whatsoever. Okay. It's so, it's so bright. Okay. Oh no. Blend. Blend. Right, so although I feel like I got it to a pretty good blend, I'm going to go over this with the foundation thing puff again because it was so hard to blend that I've taken off the coverage of the foundation. Mm. Like as soon as I put it down it kind of like set onto my skin and then like even though it's supposed to be like a melty sort of formula it didn't do anything, it was kind of like trying to move bubble gum off the surface. So I'm gonna apply it to my finger this time and try and like pat it on this side and see if this is any better. Like marginally. But see how it's like really sticking to the first, the absolute first place that I put it. Yeah, nah, not a fan, not a fan. I am gonna be reviewing these. Um, so yeah. But already, I would so not recommend these as cheap products. They're just so hard to, so hard to deal with. <laughs> just, just a little bit. So are you supposed to keep your foundation on underneath when it blends so poorly? Like there's more foundation on my finger than there is on my face right now. I'm gonna try and do the lips with the same color because matchy matchy. I'm just picking up a little bit more powder. And I hope that I can get uh, should not have talked just then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's zoom you guys in and I'm going to show you what everything looks like up the close. <laughs> All right, let's start off with the cheeks. So this is what it looks like. You can see that freckle um, is where you can totally see it now because there is no coverage left underneath that blush there. I've done my best to blend it out, but you can kind of still see some of the harsh edges like in this center here. There's not that much blush and then around the outside there's more blush there's really really apparent freckles that weren't there before same on this side to a lesser extent because i applied it first with my finger i feel like it blended much better um but there is still yeah a lack of coverage and mm, not a fan you can also see that my mascara is already transferring to the bottom part of my eye which is not good it does feel like it's dried down though which is a good start. Now for the lips. Hmm. Hi. Patchy. The color is actually pretty, but it's so hard to get a good crisp line. It's impossible to blend. <laughs> impossible. And you can see that, especially around the inner portion and the very outer portion, I found it hard to get a good line around the outside, but also the applicator is too small. My lips are not big, but to get into the inside portion, and actually look, so same with this part, you kind of have to lie flat. You can't really do this because 
the black part of the applicator hits you in the mouth. You can just get in like that, but then doing the upper border. Also, don't talk in front of it because you'll blow all of the powder away, as I've done like five times now. So to do this sort of thing, like you can't see when you're holding a mirror where you're going. And it's pretty much impossible to get like the inner part without actually smashing your face with this. I don't know, it's really hard to get it even. So even though I'm going over parts, I'm sorry this isn't the most flattering angle, but it's still not really becoming any more even. It just looks so patchy. Mm, not a fan. So I'm just going to even out my cheeks a little bit by using the same cushion puff. No extra product or anything. I'm just using it to blend it out. There's still that bald patch. Mm, mm -mm. And I'm going to do the same on this side too. Blend out the harsh lines that the blush had left. I would so not recommend this as a blush. Actually, I would so not recommend that product at all. And that looks a little bit better. Not great. <laughs> I do have to say that the color looks really pretty. I do like the lips, but mm. So I'm gonna be checking in with you guys a little bit later. I'm going out to teach. It is super rainy and I hope that I don't get my face too wet, but um, I will be back a little bit later to show you guys what everything is looking like. So it's been about an hour and I've had some coffee and the lipstick is looking a little patchy. But when I was looking up close, I noticed that, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but there's a bunch of like <laughs> pink powder on my chin. And that's just from the lipstick. Oh, it doesn't come off. <laughs> Guys, I don't like this lipstick at all. Mm-hmm, okay. That's still on there. R.I.P. It looks even worse now. <laughs> but the rest of my face is looking fine. I actually don't mind the color of the foundation. I know the exposure is super, super high. That looks a bit better. It's slightly off, but not so much that people are going to tell me that my face is orange, <laughs> thankfully. The brows are okay. I'm not mad at them. The liquid liner is still pretty grey, and I've cleaned up the mascara. It's just not very obvious. So I will check in at the end of my day. So it has been nine hours since I put the makeup on. My face is looking a little bit oily, more so than dewy, I would say, especially around the nose part, and it feels quite like damp. Not really damp, like the foundation is starting to transfer onto my finger when I touch my face, which isn't quite that good. The lips are totally gone. It actually faded pretty well throughout the day and it wasn't too obvious. The cheeks are actually still pretty pink as well. The eyeliner still doesn't look super good and the mascara I'm not super impressed with. I would say I probably wouldn't use the mascara again just because it's a little bit average. The brows have lasted nicely and I think it's probably a product I would use again because it's a little bit smaller than my brow kit. And this is what the skin looks like overall. I, yeah, I think it's a bit oily. <laughs> you can also see where my glasses have been sitting up the top of my nose there and there. And there is a bit of cakiness around the side of my nose too, but in general it just looks quite dewy slash oily. There's a little bit of wear on my chin because I do lean on my chin a fair amount, which is totally my fault, but also, yeah, it's pretty bad to be, <laughs> to be honest. But that is it for nine hours. It's not that bad, really. It's actually pretty good. The foundation is probably just a little bit too oily for day-to-day -day wear. I'm not sure if it's that it's the sunscreen doing it underneath or the powder, not really controlling anything. Um, but we will find out when I do a full review on the foundation, which I think is actually already up before this is up. I'm not even sure anymore. I'm filming this in June <laughs> so that it's ready to upload later. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna go to bed now. <laughs> and that is it for this full face of It's Skin Makeup. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!